Hi guys, welcome to something interesting. Today I have something which is sparked by some um, by a recent incident that has happened in Pakistan, and uh, that is the very unfortunate incident of 24 soldiers, uh, 24 brave army men, who were um, attacked by the NATO forces. Um, on the border in um, the Mormon agency. And um, what came out of it was um, this word called friendly fire. And um, I thought that we should um, understand what is friendly fire? Um, how can a fire be friendly? Uh, where does the whole concept stem from? Uh, well, friendly fire is a military term. Um, it was uh, something that the U.S. military used um, and it basically refers to a discharge of a weapon which is in the direction of allies uh, or fellow soldiers um, which results in their injury or in their death and it is inadvertent um, and at the same time it, will it, it does not account for negligence and uh, it is factored in as a friendly fire when you are in active combat with the enemy and in the process should you um, by mistake, as I said, inadvertently um, hit uh, an ally or one of your own that is termed as a friendly fire. And it is uh, also termed as um, fratricide, which basically means uh, the killing of a brother. And, um, um, you know, um, a term which even um, is used for the friendly fire is blue on blue. And the reason for that is basically that the NATO has the flag, uh, the pennant of, of a blue, um, uh, has a blue pennant and just one second, yeah, has blue pennants and, and uh, if a NATO force hits one of their own, then it's blue on blue. So that's another term that they use. And um, interestingly, um, uh, these incidents um, have always been there in history, um, be it the War of the Roses, um, the, the, the York versus the Lancaster, or uh, be it the World Wars. But the, the incident of friendly fire has always been there. Uh, now, if we were to see that why, uh, you know, uh, is there a, a margin and a room uh, for friendly fire? So basically, they say that uh, the reasons are errors of positioning or um, it is in terms of identification. Identification that you believe that you're attacking the enemy, but you're not and positioning when uh, there is combat with close proximity and uh, you think that you know um, you're again hitting the enemy and from in close proximity you hit someone of your own so that is the reason why you say you know friendly fire um, and of course they talk about how to eliminate it because friendly fire is something that is seriously investigated um, of course it is something that you do not want happening, you do not want it occurring, and hence there's training, there's use of technology and tactics. And when we say tactics, it often is that if, since I said friendly fire happens when you're actually in active combat and you're engaging the enemy, so if one side is actually, for instance, let us give, give the example of the incident that happened in Pakistan, that if the NATO forces were um, going ahead and engaging uh, the enemy, i.e. the Taliban, then the forces in Pakistan should have been aware. They should have been told, they should have been informed that an activity will take place. The reason being that once they do attack the Taliban and the enemies, uh, the Pakistani forces are vigilant and they're alert. And if they need to combat, because if they're hitting somebody, they're going to go and run away. Not all of them are going to die. So if they go running, uh, there's somebody else to kind of um, counterattack at them and, and kind of, uh, you know, um, come in, you know, be at the other direction. So it's, it's, it's strange when um, 
uh, another party is not aware of any activity that is to happen. The other reason being, so, so these are tactics which are basically, um, uh, and of course technology where you have uh, night vision, you have uh, stealth technology, you know uh, what's where, you know the positioning of various check posts, you know where the enemy could be, you know where your friend, friendly forces and your allies are going to be and everything's kind of positioned and marked. Um, and when um, that is not the case or should there be negligence or when it is not inadvertent then it is not a friendly fire. Um, so a friendly fire has a very strict definition and um, every friendly fire needs an investigation uh, to ensure something like this does not happen again. Um, again as I was uh, just discussing the incident that happened recently in Pakistan um, uh, there was a there was uh, the investigations of are of course un, un, as as I record this we still do do not know the conclusion we do not conclusively know what happened and what transpired and there are only reports coming in from various army uh, colonels and majors and people that were present there or, or they got information uh, from the check posts um, but it's very important to understand that um, you you need to. Uh, understand your terrain and uh, if you have been engaged um, in a war um, against terror for almost 10 years um, there are certain expectations that you will know your terrain and you will know your place and you will know your locations and you will know um, who's uh, where and what their locations are and uh, something which is not a friendly fire should not be called a friendly fire and if it is a friendly fire then it should be investigated and you need to ensure that it doesn't happen again. So um, that was um, something, um, I don't know if interesting, but definitely something sad for us, uh, for losing 24 very, very brave men. Um, and um, again, um, it, it also reflects that uh, if you were to make a mistake, um, and if, if it is inadvertent, and if you were to make a mistake, then you really need to fix it, because it doesn't say much for your military intelligence. Um, and uh, the kind of technology and the kind of time and experience that you have in a certain location for 10 years. So um, uh, it's, a, it's a very um, crucial thing. And um, so be it blue on blue or blue on green or whatever, uh, the term that you use for it, it's something that needs to be taken uh, seriously because um, there's no point calling a friend a friend if you can't trust one, right? So that's something interesting and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.